Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at two absolutely massive performance upgrades. One for a CMU emulator in relation to FPS++ and a brand new update to it. And the second we're going to be covering is in relation to Yuzu emulator. I'm going to be providing you with a special build of this Nintendo Switch emulator that's going to allow you to play games like Pokemon Let's Go in a much, much more enjoyable fashion than you currently can. There's a hell of a lot to cover in this video, so let's get things started by taking a look at the brand new awesome update to FPS++ for CMU emulator. Okay, so here I am in game in Breath of the Wild on CMU version 1.15.4b. This is at 4K resolution and you can see my performance is very, very good in the top left hand corner of my screen. However, check this out guys. If you come to the options tab in CMU emulator, you can see it at the top here. Click this, come down to general settings, go across to the graphics tab and turn off this full sync at GX to draw done setting. Click the X and when I come back into gameplay, you can see that my performance has skyrocketed to well over 100 frames per second. You will also notice that when not using this full sync at GX to draw done setting, when looking down on these enemy groups down in the center of Ateno ruins, they are still fully and correctly moving as they should in the game world. This stutter fix and NPC fix comes thanks to a brand new update and optimization to the FPS++ graphics pack. You can see that we now have this dynamic game speed option, the fence method, the set FPS limit and this brand new NPC stutter fix titled CPU occlusion query. By enabling this option, it gives us the ability to turn off GX2 draw done, get the absolutely incredible performance boost we get by turning that option off and still have correctly interactable and in sync NPCs and enemies in the world. For demonstration purposes, I'm using a 165 frames per second cap, however, you yourself should use either 60 or 72 depending on the screen refresh of your monitor, and you should also be using this performance fence if you want the best performance out of your game. This is in fact the better fence which I discussed in my video only yesterday. Finally, in relation to this new FPS++ upgrade, you're also going to want to have this dynamic game speed turned on. For me, I just leave it at 32 frames averaged, though many you users have reported that if your CPU is very good you can get better performance when using 4 and if your CPU is weaker you should use 32 but in my testing so far I haven't really seen any performance differences between any of these numbers. Please also be aware that you still require the latest version of CMU Hook in order for any of these graphics packs to work and on top of that you also need your game to be updated to V208. If you are also going to be playing your game with GX2 draw done turned off you are also also 100% required to have this LWZX crash workaround graphics pack turned on. If you don't have it turned on, your game is only going to start crashing randomly. So please, please make sure that you have LWZX crash turned on in your graphics pack menu. To get any of these new graphics packs, all you have to do is click the download latest community graphics packs button in the bottom right hand corner of the graphics pack window and it will download, extract and install every single one of these graphics packs for you to use right now. Something I do want to make you guys aware of is the fact that if you are not using full sync at GX2 draw done, you are not going to have a fully working camera rune. So in the event that you want to use the camera rune in Breath of the Wild on CMU emulator, make sure to toggle that option back on in the options general graphics tab. It's pretty insane the fact that in the last year we've gone from running Breath of the Wild at an unstable 60 frames per second to running it at well over 100 frames per second in many scenarios at 4K resolution. I have absolutely no doubt that with this brand new optimization and addition of CPU occlusion query to FPS++ that many, many more people are now not only going to be able to get 30 frames per second on a very, very low end systems, but also that many, many more users are now also going to be able to achieve 60 frames per second with this brand new bug fix. Okay, so that's enough 
enough about Breath of the Wild for now, let's swap over to my desktop where I'm going to be showing you how you can download and use a brand new build of Yuzu emulator that's going to give you a much more enjoyable experience in Pokemon Let's Go and indeed any other game that is 30 frames per second for the Nintendo Switch. Down in the description of this video you'll find this version of the Patreon build of a Yuzu emulator, however this one is a little special, I'll explain how it's special in just a minute. First of all, in order to play Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu or Eevee, you are going to require a game save. You'll also find one of those down in the description of this video, and you're also going to be required to change a few settings. So in this graphics section, you are definitely going to need to turn off asynchronous GPU emulation. While this option will boost your frame rates in games, it will also introduce severe instability and make them crash more. You're also going to want to have use disk shader on, and when you come to the control section, you want to set this to custom. Set this section right here to a Joy-Cons docked and make sure that you configure your gamepad in this section right here. Once you have your analog sticks and all your buttons set up, all you have to do is click OK, OK, OK and come back to this menu and boot your game. This build also contains a fix for a crash that can happen when you're loading your shaders so that's yet another advantage and once you get through this launching screen, if you've done everything as I've shown thus far, you should get to this screen where you'll be able to select your controller. You can also see something that's very, very different. This game is now running at 30 frames per second, however, Yuzu is now showing us that 30 30 frames per second is 100% speed. That's quite important and you will see exactly why once we get into gameplay. Okay, so we're in gameplay now and you can see and indeed hear that Pokemon is now running at 30 frames per second, 100% speed and audio and game sync are absolutely perfect. You'll also see when we get into a battle, no longer is everything completely sped up and almost unplayable and it makes it so, so much easier and much, much more enjoyable to play this game on this emulator. This 30 frames per second screen V-Sync cap is a new experimental update that, at least at time of making this video, isn't part of Yuzu Canary, but as I said, you can simply download the build from the description of this video and test out this new experiment feature before it potentially gets added to the experimental branch of Yuzu. Now I must must definitely stress this, this is not a build you should use for any extended period of time, it is literally just a small little preview that I wanted to show you guys of an upcoming feature that may be added to the experimental branch of Yuzu in the coming days. Just look at and listen to how much more playable this game is when using this 30 frames per second V-Sync cap, this is going to make Pokemon Let's Go and indeed any other 30 frames per second titles for the Nintendo Switch infinitely more playable on this Switch emulator. I'm going to now bring you in a little snippet of the original Patreon build in which we do not have this 30 frames per second cap for comparison. Okay, so here is the old Patreon build without this 30 frames per second cap, let's take a quick listen. Now let's swap back to this build with the 30 frames per second V-Sync cap. To be honest, I don't think there's any kind of choice, it is literally a night and a day difference for playability, especially so when you consider that obviously not everyone is going to have a very, very strong CPU and be able to run Pokemon Let's Go at anywhere near 60 frames per second, this new 30 V-Sync cap is literally going to make this game infinitely more accessible to many, many more users of this emulator. Let's take yet another example, this time a battle scene using this 30 frames per second cap. Not only are all of the animations, sounds, music and audio playing back at the correct speed, at the correct frame rate, 30 frames per second for Pokemon Let's Go, but when you use any of these different moves, for example, let's just use Zippy Zap with my Pikachu, you can see that everything is correctly synchronized, the sounds are synced with the actions and everything is playing exactly like it should. Now obviously yes, this 30 FPS screen vasing limit is definitely a hack and it also 
100% should never make it into any kind of a final version of Yuzu emulator, but I genuinely believe that this should be added at least as some sort of a workaround until they can figure out exactly why 30 frames per second games do not currently play back at the correct speed at 100% game speed. So yeah guys, all you have to do is download the build from this video's description, follow all of the instructions I laid out in the beginning of this section and you'll have this game up and running in absolutely no time at all. Again guys, if there are any questions you have in relation to anything I've covered in this video, do not be afraid to ask them in the comment section below, or if you need even more in-depth help, feel free to join the BSOD Gaming official Discord server, you'll also find a link for that down in this video's description. Again, at the end of this video guys, I want to ask every single one of you to please pledge your support to this awesome Nintendo Switch emulator. To do so, all you have to do is head on over to their Patreon page and pledge as much as you possibly can if you have the ability to do so. Considering the amazing, utterly unbelievable work these guys have done so far on this emulator, they 110% deserve our support and backing. So that's going to be it for this video. At the end of this one, I also want to give you guys a very, very heartfelt thanks. Just the other day, BSOD Gaming reached 100,000 subscribers, and I really, really must give all of you guys the biggest thank you I possibly can, since without your continued support, I wouldn't even be making any of these videos. So once again guys, cheers for checking out the video, remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.